One thing that's always interesting is whenever a video game somehow manages to form some sort of social obligations, and Halo being a staple of LAN parties, couch co-op, and of course online gameplay over years, somehow expectations of other players, the community, and whatever experience is shared amongst everyone playing together are definitely formed, and over the 20 years of Halo's existence, there's definitely been some unwritten rules or etiquette that definitely goes into Halo, and while of course there's nothing explicitly stopping you from breaking an unwritten rule or just YOLOing yourself for whatever reason, we do think it's always interesting to take a look at what some of these unwritten rules are, because for the most part if you play with a group of people who follow these rules, chances are you're gonna have a little bit of a better time than someone who doesn't necessarily keep up with the best Halo etiquette. So let's look at some of the biggest examples. For instance, this is a very easy one, but in big team battle, if you're the gunner on the back of someone's warthog and you're shooting at someone behind you and your warthog driver is honking like crazy, he's likely trying to point out an enemy up ahead for you to shoot at or an enemy much closer with a much more important threat level than whoever you're shooting your bullets at. In any Halo game, Halo Reach and Forward, if your teammate is assassinating someone and they're doing that really cool assassination animation, don't steal their kill. I know in Halo Reach, it would give you the metal called Yoink, but that wasn't necessarily something to be proud of. Okay, this one's definitely more dated and expired and not something you really ever see nowadays, but some of you guys might remember back in the Halo 3 days, you had the option to veto a map, and there definitely was the etiquette of if you didn't want to play on a map in Halo 3, just say veto only once. We all played in those lobbies where you would just hear some kid screaming into the mic, veto, 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 veto. Sometimes you'd get two or three of them going at the same time. It was awful. Yeah, not so relevant nowadays, but back then, definitely was an unwritten rule of Halo. Also, in Halo, there's the option when you get betrayed and you can boot your teammate for betraying you. Now, very obviously, if your teammate accidentally killed you, maybe you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. You don't have to hit them with that betrayal boot. I mean, by all means, if they're being toxic and they're betraying you or they were just being stupid, get them out of there. But I mean, if it's a clear accident, this goes even double if you're playing in campaign and you somehow get killed by your teammate. Betrayal booting them out of a campaign mission. Come on, it's just a little toxic. Okay, then there's the laws of teabagging. Now, in a custom game lobby, or a private game, or even campaign, it's usually some sort of peace offering, though there's still no exact obligation, but it is a form of communication. Teabagging in multiplayer, on the other hand, it's a little bit toxic, so you gotta at least be able to back it up with some skill, and it's definitely a case-by-case -case usage. If you're just getting absolutely demolished, and you finally get a kill off, and then you start teabagging, you're probably gonna trigger the other team, and they're gonna start treating you very toxically back. So players be warned. This one is more just proper etiquette amongst your teammates, but if you're in a ranked game and you're salty about something, don't quit and just leave your team hanging. Try your best to turn things around and just sit it through it. Now also in ranked, if you're dying a lot and the game is close especially and your teammates are really trying or they're really close, just hide, hang back, stop feeding the other team kills, and let your teammates try to close out the game for the win. Especially when it's like 40 to 45 and you're down, maybe just taking the L for your kill death ratio is the better option if your team can still pull out the win and you get to benefit from the win as well. Now going to custom games in drag race, the person with the better weapon should let the other person drive. And of course if you have the better weapon, don't get in the driver's seat of the mongoose. Okay, if you're playing Halo, don't grab the power weapon that's on the map and then run over to where all the other team is and die over by their base. You're not Amazon, this isn't same day delivery, chill, don't give them the power weapons right right away, please. If you're hosting a custom game lobby or you're making suggestions for the host as to which custom game you're going to play, please, only one game of Jenga Tower a night. That game just completely gets boring after you play it over and over and over again. Also in Cops and Speeders, no holding grudges if you die. So many times we've had people break this rule and it just ruins the entire game. Okay, if you join someone in Forge mode or you get invited by a friend and they want to show you a map they're working on, don't start building things or moving things. Don't spawn anything or touch anything because you could be messing up their entire map by having one obscure item that they can't find later. Back in the good old day of split screen, we all knew the classic 
classic rule, no screen peeking. There's also other ways you can mess up your teammates along the way, like in infection, don't lead all the zombies to your teammates are when you're running away. Also, another older unwritten rule definitely was whoever's Xbox it was that we were playing Halo on, they got to use the main Xbox controller. Everyone else got to use that Mad Cat's controller. We all know how that went. Okay, unless specified otherwise, where everyone's chill with it and they've played through the game multiple times, don't skip the cutscene if someone in your group is trying to watch the cutscene. And even more importantly, if you're playing a Halo game through with someone who's experiencing it for the first time, be courteous when a cutscene is on. Imagine it being 2007, Halo 3 just came out, you're on your way on the level of the Covenant to finish the fight, you team up with the Flood, you make your way across the bridge, Truth is literally right there and the Arbiter is approaching him, and then all of a sudden you just hear the sound of Tails eating chips in your ear. Like it just takes away some of the amazingness of the moment. Yeah, so maybe don't try to have a dissertation with your friends during the middle of a cutscene, wait till afterwards, or be courteous of other sounds your mic might be picking up on. Okay, this is another older one, but in Halo 3 ODST, when you're in firefight and you're trying to survive, you are limited to how many medkits you have until they restock. So the general rule of thumb is one medkit for each player, unless someone literally suggests and gives away their medkit to their teammate. That way, there's no confusion when the one player who managed to keep themselves alive the best and avoided taking damage finally needs to heal up to find that there's no medkits left, isn't punished by dying because because his teammates decide to use them all. Also in Firefight, since all the lives are shared, maybe don't be reckless and push at the new wave in a round of firefight, especially if you're gonna get yourself killed. Just be courteous. Also, every time you jump, you should also press the crouch button. So whenever there's a ledge that's just slightly higher, you can actually make the jump and not kind of stumble and fall back down. So after we put some of our thoughts down for this video, when we're in the planning stages, we decided to ask Twitter what they thought. And the tweet ended up blowing up with us getting literally hundreds of responses to unwritten rules that exist in Halo. So we thought we would take some notes directly from the community. Now right away there was this mega debate between the etiquette and ethics behind teabagging. It seems like there is no definitive rule when it comes to teabagging. For instance, if an enemy player teabags, shoots, or melees your dead body, you must hunt them and do the same many times over. Your honor depends on it, Spartan. Versus things like if an enemy teabags looking at you, he's a friend for life. If you get teabagged, don't report unsportsmanlike behavior. It's a part of Halo culture just dust yourself off, kill them, and do it back. Teabagging before death is a greeting, teabagging after death is an insult. There was also some more warthog etiquette that got pointed out, like if you honk with the warthog, that means that someone should get in the warthog. This one I don't know how often it is applicable, but if an enemy player drives up alone in a warthog and beeps, you are obligated to get in with them. You can fire at your friends if you need to get their attention. If you team kill me, don't get pissed off when I team kill you back. No one wants to get booted, but no one gets away with it. This next one I was kind of mad that I actually didn't even think of it myself, but definitely an unwritten law of Halo. As soon as the game says game over, you better grenade yourself, grenade your friends, throw grenades, shoot at whoever's around, doesn't matter what team they're on, but definitely do something. I feel like we all instinctively do it anyways. In Halo CE, always aim your camera up when you're airborne in the Warthog. It gives you perfect landing 99.9% .9 of the time. If an enemy gets in your Warthog, he's now your ally. If he's on the gun, you must now help him mow down your teammates. This is from the older Halo games, but don't be that guy who delays the countdown right when the screen is fading to black and about to start. Okay, maybe you can do it like once or twice, but more than that, it starts to get annoying. Grunt Birthday Party and I Would Have Been Your Daddy Skull need to be on on every campaign run. Every run ever. This is an old one, but let's veto for BRs. When playing campaign with new players, you are legally obligated to show them the skull locations and easter eggs along the way. This one is very true. This next one was another contentious issue, but the only way to carry objectives, like the flag, is to juggle. If you are carrying the flag, just carry it. Don't drop it and pick it up over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's annoying and unnecessary. This is one of those situations where you have to choose. Are you going to be annoying, but get the 
flag to the plate faster, or are you just gonna, you know, take the slower route and slowly travel your way back with the flag? Always frame the elephants into each other on Sand Trap. When playing Oddball, if your teammates have all died around you, try to get the ball off of the map for a ball reset. It gives your responding team a chance to get control back and keeps it away from the enemy team. And seriously, we had so many more tweets over on that Twitter thread, so thanks everyone who interacted with our tweet. Seriously, there were like a hundred more just about teabagging alone. But if you feel like we missed one of the major unwritten rules or laws about Halo, let us know what your thoughts are or which one we missed in the comments down below, or if there's one that you definitely agree with more than the others. Also, you can let us know in the comments down below. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribing notifications on. You can follow me on Twitter at Rocket Elijah or follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. But otherwise, that is it for today. Thanks you guys so much for watching. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.